and today we are going to make a chicken pasta bake. And I sent my mum to the shop because I didn't walk all that way with a heavy bag. But I'm not sure if my mum got this stuff, but I've shown you all the stuff I got. So two onions, some corn flour, some garlic, some butter, I mean, what's this? Pepper, some salt, some mixed herbs, some olive oil, some milk and some butter and I will be making this all oh. oh that took a long time that is so heavy I also got some I've got some mushrooms we won't need all of those so what we might do is we might chop those up and put them in the freezer so that we can use them for another day and I've got some frozen peas but we're not going to need to use all of those why is this covered in milk? because I had a bit of an accident on the way up here Mm, I know, we're all right with that. Got some cheese, yeah, if we want it. We don't have to use it, but it's quite nice. You've got some British leeks. And we have, and some courgettes. Courgettes. You don't have to use these, you could just use some cucumber. And I've got some pasta. You only can use panini. <laughs> this pen, pen, penne, I think it is. And we don't really need... Well, we might do. We'll we might see. need chicken soup, but still get it if... But if you went to buy this, still get it because, but even, you might not need it. And what I got out of the freezer this morning was some chicken breasts. So let me show you these. And because these, these are such good value. So you get a whole bag and it says on there, cooked from frozen. This is the important bit. There are some frozen chicken breasts out there, which, um, you have to fully defrost. So make sure you read the instructions. But this is a really good one and very, very reasonable and tastes delicious. Now we looked at the equivalent of fresh chicken breast fillets and they were quite expensive. So they were a lot more. You could also substitute the chicken breast fillets for the chicken corn, couldn't we? And the, the ones that we were gonna get were four pounds, 18 bucks and it used to be £4.75. That's right, and these are only £2.99. What? Yeah, £2.99. How much money did we spend on this? How much money did we spend? Well, overall we spent quite a bit of money, Yeah, but, but like just once we break now. it down, I think the whole meal for the whole family will cost about £4, Wait, we're having which would be brilliant. We're having this for dinner? We are having this for dinner. But what we might do is we might take it round to one of our friends so we can bless them with it. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Should we do that? So you've got to make this super duper good. Okay. Yeah. Let's get cooking. Wash our hands. Okay, Rebecca, could you put one tablespoon of oil into the wok, please? Thank you, that's really good. Okay, and then what you need to do is to pour all of the chicken into the pan as well. I and can't that's do that. Can Shall I help you? Of course I can. So we'll just tip this into here, like this. And we're just going to let that brown off a little bit okay so let's put that in there be very careful when you've got non-stick pans you really shouldn't use a metal spoon so if you notice I'm trying not to touch the actual pan yes with the oil it's making it very hot if you can stir that round for me and remember when you do that remember to hold the handle of the pan so it doesn't slip away as you can see it's getting all the olive oil is getting all good. Well done. Okay. Okay, Rebecca, we have two leeks here. What we need to do is we need to wash them out because what you do, you get a lot of mud in here where they've been growing. So and we need we've to... been doing, we just did that. Absolutely. So we need to wash all of that out. And then what I'd like we you cut to do. Here and here. That's right. We cut the ends off. And then what we do, we slice it this way and then we chop it like that very, very finely. Okay, I'm going to do my magic in three, two, one. Well done, 
Rebecca. You've done that again. Well done. Okay, how's that chicken doing? It looks like egg. <laughs> it looks like egg. It's yeah. Okay, can we just give that a really good stir? And now it's going to the the pasta just went off. The pasta did just beep off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off and I'm going to rinse that in cold water. Okay, Rebecca, so we have one courgette. What I'd like you to do is to chop off the ends and chop it all finely for me. Look, here's the ends. In three, two, one. Oh, wow. Thank you, Rebecca. Have you just eaten one of those? Yeah, it's really gross. <laughs> it is gross. You thought it was like cucumber, didn't no, you? No, I thought it is cucumber. No, it comes from the same family. Try it, gross. <laughs> so, we're going to put this over here too. So, now we will cut up these mushrooms. And I think also what we've got to do, if you can do your magic, we need to peel all the outsides because they're not that nice. Okay. Mm. Okay? Three, two, one. Oh, well done, Rebecca. That is our mushrooms chopped. Okay, Rebecca, can you put tip in all that chopped onion for me, please? Yeah, I'm just going to go like this. Well done. Okay, and then, well done. It's very. You're doing a good job there. Then the leeks, can you put the leeks in there as well now, please? Okay. All of them leeks. Fantastic job. Okay, then the courgette. And the mushrooms. Okay. And that you will need to add. Well, if you have anyone helping you make this, you will need them to be get, to getting a teaspoon of garlic, salt, pepper, and mixed herbs. That's correct. So we need one teaspoon of mixed herbs, don't we? One teaspoon of garlic and when granules. And over here, I'll get it. That's right. And that's a pinch of salt. Very good. Salt. And quite a good grating of pepper there as well. So we've got the garlic, the mixed herbs. Not done so they're not done. Now, and let's give it all a really good stir. Mixed herbs. Really good stir now. It's best to use a wooden spoon. Excellent. And then we leave that for about five minutes until everything has browned off. So, now we're going to be making the floor. So, you'll need a job like this. And on here, you can't really see it, but it has... The sign where it says one point and not one point, one pint. One so pint. what we need to do is put one pint of milk into that jug for me, please. And I'm not going to be doing my magical mess. No. Be very, very careful when you do this. And then we are going to get one tablespoon of butter margarine. Obviously if this was going to be um, vegan or vegetarian and you didn't want to use milk or your dairy intolerant you could use the plant-based like <laughs> the plant-based milk or you could use sunflower butter. Now, I am, I so am this dairy is free. you are dairy free. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop this into the microwave. This is the easiest way that I have made the white sauce. So I'm going to put that on for four minutes. Okay, what we're going to do now, while the milk is heating up, we're going to put a tablespoon of corn flour into the cup. Can you pour it now? Of course I can. There we go. It's quite a heat teaspoon, tablespoon, sorry. That's it. Okay, I think we might put in another one actually. Yeah, so that's going to be two tablespoons of corn flour. Excellent, well done. And then can you top that up for me with the milk just to cover the top of the corn flour, please? 
That's it. We have done. Now we need more milk. And then stir that in until it's a nice smooth Can I get paste. That? Okay, now we have a special ingredient that we like to put into our sauce. So can you put one teaspoon of mustard, not a heaped one, because you don't want it too in, hot. This is that, that's English it. mustard. That's it, and then put that into your little paste and stir that in for me, please. That'll make now, it a yellow color. I was just thinking of another little tip for this recipe. If, um, this is ideal, so if you haven't got the frozen chicken or you don't want to use corn, then if you've had a roast chicken the day before, then that would be really, really good. If you've got some chicken left over, you could use that to make the pasta bake. Yeah. Always good to use leftovers. We never want to chuck food away, do we? Because you can yeah. always use it for something, can't you? Looks grace. Looks grace. Shall we I'm just show the camera if you can see that? Let's so it's like... That. That's it. Okay, so this is nice and hot, so you need to be really careful because it was bubbling. But while you do it in the microwave, what you do not want to do is do it too much. So you do have to watch it because otherwise it could bubble over everywhere. Now, this little paste, you just tip that in and then keep stirring. If you haven't got a whisk, just use a fork. Okay, and then this may start thickening up immediately. This just makes it easier than doing something on the hob. I can't see the point in like lots of washing up. But that is thickening up nicely. So Rebecca, could you just put that into the microwave for one more minute, please? It is very hot. One more minute. Okay. What we're gonna do now is if you've got a food processor, yep. you could use this and we just put in two slices of bread and put this on full power so that then it comes as fine breadcrumbs. If you haven't got one of these, you can buy breadcrumbs, but then that's quite expensive. The other alternative what you could do, which makes it really, really nice, because this is just to sprinkle on the top of the pasta bake, you could get any sort of flavored crisps, chicken flavor if you want to, um, and then crunch the whole bag up so that they're all tiny pieces and then sprinkle that over. But for this purpose, I'm going to put just two slices of bread in and whisk that up into the food processor. I've also put the oven on to 180 now. And if you look at this sauce, that is a lovely thick consistency now. Darling. Okay, so now we have all our cooked pasta here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the chicken mix into there and put the sauce in. So here we go. Now this should fill up this pan. All them beautiful, beautiful, if I turn that around then you can see that. Beautiful juices just coming out. Oh, it smells delicious. And that chicken is so tender now. And keep on on watching if you want to see me eat it. <laughs> you can't wait, can you? Yeah, it smells so nice. It does, it does smell delicious. So here we go. Give it a real good mix up. Yeah, it tastes so nice. Oh, beautiful. The aroma on this is just amazing. It's making me feel very, very hungry. Okay, and then I'm going to pour on the thick sauce, it the white sauce. It does make you more hungry if you haven't had lunch. There we go. So that is beautiful. So then what we're going to do is put these, either you can put them into individual pots or you can put it into a great big casserole dish. Put that in the oven for 15 minutes. Here we go. I'm going to transfer this into our oven proof dishes. Okay, so We've transferred this into our casserole dish and I have blitzed up 
the breadcrumbs and I'm just going to scatter them over the top. It's beautiful. And this is an option as well, but it does add a really nice flavour to this. So I'm just going to be putting the mature grated cheese all over the top. And then what we're going to do, we're going to pop this into the oven for 15 minutes. Okay, so we've just taken this out of the oven and the smell is divine. Just the, the crunchy top now with that baked cheese on the top, delicious. So we're going to get Rebecca to try some. So Rebecca, the moment of truth, what do you think? Oh, I wouldn't take that much. <laughs> That's going to be a lot in your mouth. Yeah. And it's very, very hot, isn't it? Hmm? No, it's not. Okay, let me see what you think to that then. What does that taste like? Delicious. Oh, well done, darling. Thank you, you've made a beautiful meal. So this is the end result. How lovely is that?